Absolutely the most despair-inducing monster horror film of 2020, and the only one that combines deep-sea dread with Lovecraftian style. At the Mariana Trench, 11,000 meters below the surface, hides a monster of such proportions. Friendly reminder, due to its intensity, suffocation, and oppressive nature, it is not recommended for individuals with claustrophobia or thalassophobia to watch this movie alone. The story takes place in a future world where human technology has advanced to the point of extracting resources from depths exceeding 10,000 meters in the ocean. The Kepler Oil Rig Workstation, belonging to the Tian Industries Group, is established at the Earth's deepest point, the Mariana Trench, in this perpetually sunless and extremely oppressive environment. Nora, a mechanical engineer, has been working for months, but on this day, the monotonous and dull routine is about to be shattered. Just after Nora finishes washing up, she notices seawater seeping in from above the workstation. Sensing trouble, Nora barely has time to react before a massive influx of seawater inundates the interior. Desperately making her way to the isolation chamber, she loudly urges her teammates to flee. However, due to the sudden turn of events, only Rodrigo manages to join Nora in the isolation chamber. As they attempt to close the chamber door, the other two teammates appear just a short distance away. The powerful pressure deforms the entire corridor, and seawater violently rushes in like a high-pressure water jet. Nora realizes they are out of time and is forced to make a difficult decision. The instantaneous pressure difference creates a massive shockwave, propelling them hundreds of meters away. Fortunately, they only suffer minor injuries, but the crisis is far from over. The voice system warns that the structure of the station is compromised, and the entire station will soon collapse. Even the communication system malfunctions, preventing them from sending a distress signal to the control center. Realizing the urgency, their only option is to use the nearest escape pod to return to the surface. They act swiftly, as they pass through a wreckage site. They followed a faint distress call and rescued a fortunate teammate. Navigating through a narrow passage, they encountered teammates who had been tragically crushed to death by concrete debris scattered everywhere. Finally reaching their destination, they discover that all the escape pods are gone, except for Captain Lucian sitting alone. Only moments ago, several dozen surviving teammates were sent up by Captain Lucian. Now, with Nora included, there are still six people left on the station, no one knows exactly what happened, but they are aware that the station will explode due to structural damage in half an hour. Time is running out, their only chance to survive is to head to the rowback station. Captain Lucian planned to don a diving suit and take the elevator down to the seabed, 11,000 meters deep. From there, they would walk to a transit station to replenish oxygen before proceeding along the seabed to row back. Though the plan seemed simple, executing it would be exceedingly difficult. Walking in the deep sea is extremely slow, and even if the diving suits can withstand the immense water pressure, oxygen could still run out. Initially, they vehemently opposed the plan, but a sudden and intense tremor made them agree. Staying here was a certain death sentence, and taking a chance seemed better. So, the group immediately took action, with apprehensive hearts. They put on specially designed deep-sea diving suits and boarded the elevator. However, an accident occurred as soon as they entered the water. Rodrigo's diving suit had been damaged at some point, and as the water pressure increased, cracks on his helmet grew larger. In the instant the chamber door opened, the tremendous water pressure crushed Rodrigo into a pulp. A living person disappeared before their eyes. Fortunately, the rest safely reached the elevator. Still reeling from the shock, they restarted the elevator to continue their descent into the deep sea. Unbeknownst to them, halfway through, they received a distress signal. Captain Lucian speculated it was from surviving teammates, so they immediately stopped the elevator at the nearest platform and dispatched Paul and Liam to investigate. However, upon reaching the designated location, all they found was a damaged escape pod and a severely mangled corpse. Upon closer inspection, something seemed to be wriggling on the corpse. Just as Paul was puzzled, an unidentified creature suddenly charged at them. Luckily, Liam reacted quickly and shot the monster, they jointly brought the creature's corpse back to the elevator, it was a species they had never seen before, potentially a new life form living in the deep sea. Emily, out of curiosity, prodded it with a pencil, and to their surprise, the creature twitched, but suddenly, the entire elevator lost power, and amidst violent shaking, another identical creature appeared from above, 
One crisis after another unfolded. The severely damaged Kepler workstation also exploded at this moment. Affected by the explosion shockwave, the entire elevator plummeted rapidly. They hastily donned their diving suits and, at the last moment of contact with the seabed, escaped the falling elevator. Massive debris continued to fall, and they had to keep running forward to avoid being buried at the seafloor. But in the end, all of them made it to the staging area safely. Next, they just needed to take the tram to the other side, reach the rest station, replenish their oxygen, and continue walking to the rowback workstation. However, not long after the tram started, they discovered that the path ahead was flooded due to leaking water. Unable to proceed with the tram, they had no choice but to continue on foot. Unexpectedly, a massive piece of debris blocked their path. Without hesitation, Nora put on her diving suit and decided to explore the route. There happened to be a passage below, and she successfully reached the other side. After confirming it was safe, the others followed suit. But when it was Paul's turn, he suddenly heard movement behind him. Realizing the danger, Paul quickly submerged himself. And with the help of his teammates, he successfully passed through. However, something pulled Paul back suddenly. A terrifying force directly severed Paul's thigh, and his helmet was instantly stained red with blood. Paul died on the spot. Apparently, it was another one of those unknown monsters. The others dared not linger for a moment and hastily ran towards the rest station. Losing another teammate threw everyone into a state of immense panic. After changing their oxygen supply, they had to continue walking to the rollback workstation. The endless darkness seemed to have no end and unknown monsters could appear at any moment. Being in such an environment felt suffocating just to think about. However, fear became reality. A monster suddenly glided past in front of them, then quickly disappeared. Before they could react, Liam was dragged away on the spot. When they noticed, the monster had already dragged Liam into a hole. They immediately pursued. Captain Lucian decisively entered the cave. And fortunately, Liam was unharmed. However, as soon as they rescued Liam, the monster launched another attack. Captain Lucian was tragically dragged away. And Nora, who was attached to the safety rope, was dragged in along with him. The monster dragged them to the other side of the cave and quickly swam upwards until Nora collided with a device, finally freeing them from the monster's grasp. However, the monster had no intention of giving up its prey. Lurking nearby, as the monster approached, its terrifying appearance became clear. In the next second, the monster suddenly lunged at Nora, opening its mouth wide, attempting to swallow her whole. Fortunately, Captain Lucian intervened in time, using a tool in his hand to temporarily drive the monster away but also provoking it further. The monster, dragging them, ascended rapidly. The sudden pressure difference triggered a warning from the diving suits. If they continued to ascend, they would all lose their lives. Captain Lucian ordered Nora to release the safety rope, but Nora vehemently disagreed. Helplessly, Captain Lucian sacrificed himself. <laughs> Due to the explosion's impact, Nora plummeted to the seabed in an instant. Lucky to be alive once again, she desperately called out Emily's name, but all she received in response was a deathly silence, guided by dim lights. Nora aimlessly felt her way around, inadvertently stumbling upon an abandoned drilling rig. Finally catching a brief respite, Nora adjusted her fraying emotions and discovered a new diving suit and a signal gun. Equipped with these items, she reignited hope and ventured back into the perilous depths of the ocean. While calling out to her teammates, Nora walked towards the rollback workstation. Shortly after emerging, she noticed a faint light ahead. Excitedly, she approached and indeed found Emily dragging the injured Liam, struggling to move forward. Nora quickly caught up. However, mistaking Nora for a monster, Emily began desperately running ahead. It wasn't until Nora tackled Emily to the ground that she realized Nora's identity, finally releasing a sigh of relief. They continued towards the end point, dragging Liam, through relentless efforts. They finally reached the rollback workstation. However, when they arrived at the entrance, they were stunned by what they saw. The entire passage was densely covered with monsters, seemingly in a state of dormancy, carefully maneuvering through. Everything initially went smoothly, but when they reached the midpoint, Emily's diving suit sounded an alarm due to oxygen depletion, awakening a monster that instantly grabbed Nora from behind. The monster launched a frenzied attack on Nora, ultimately opening its mouth wide to swallow her, along with the diving suit. In the crucial moment, the signal gun came into play. 
Nora pulled the trigger, piercing the monster's body with a single shot. Yet, upon escaping, Nora realized something was amiss. The remaining monsters didn't attack her. Instead, they followed a colossal object. Disappearing from view, looking into the distance, Nora saw a vaguely looming giant sea creature above the workstation. In haste, she fired the last illumination flare, revealing an immense deep sea monster whose head alone occupied the entire workstation. Those little monsters were just its children and grandchildren. Realizing the danger, Nora hurriedly ran towards the entrance of the workstation. However, with a casual wave, the monster triggered a cataclysmic explosion comparable to a nuclear blast. Nora, caught in the blast, was instantly thrown. Luckily, Emily appeared just in time to bring Nora back to the workstation. They supported each other, rushing towards the escape pods. Meanwhile, the monster initiated an assault on the workstation, and it was on the verge of collapsing. However, when they finally reached the escape pods, they discovered only two were functional. But Nora chose not to make a fuss, silently leaving the chance to survive for Emily and Liam. A bewildered Liam entered the escape pod, with only Emily realizing that something was amiss. With no time to explain, Nora forcibly placed Emily into the escape pod, telling her to live well. After sending them away, Nora sat alone in silence, waiting for the impending death. Just as Nora thought everything had come to an end, she suddenly realized the monster was changing direction, leading its descendants toward the escape pods. Nora realized that if this continued, both Liam and Emily would perish. Once again, she made a bold decision. Not only does she have to save her teammates, but she also has to die with the monster, so she decisively activates the station's self-destruct sequence. In the film's final moments, Liam and Emily successfully survived. But Tion Industries did not disclose the truth to the public, instead falsely claiming that everything was an accident. Simultaneously, they planned to restart the exploration project in the Mariana Trench. Hey.